Taylor series. Suppose I know that f is represented by a power series. For example, suppose that I know that the function f is given by a power series. The sum n goes from 0 to infinity of uh, some coefficients a sub n times x to the n, at least, say, when x is between negative r and r. In other words, f of x is equal to a sub 0 plus a sub 1 times x plus a sub 2 times x squared, and so on. In this case, I can figure out what the coefficients, the a sub n's, must be equal to in terms of the function f. Well, here's what I mean. Take a look at, say, f of 0. Well, if f is really given by this power series on this interval, then f of 0 is a sub 0 plus a sub 1 times 0 plus a sub 2 times 0 squared plus, say, a sub 3 times 0 cubed, and so on. But all of these terms have a 0 in them, right? a sub 1 times 0 is 0. a sub 2 times 0 squared is 0. a sub 3 times 0 cubed is 0. All of these terms are 0 except for a sub 0. And that means that I can conclude that a sub 0 is just equal to f of 0. So if f has this nice power series representation, the a sub 0 coefficient must actually be equal to the function's value at 0. But wait, there's more. The next coefficient, a sub 1, that coefficient can be calculated in terms of the derivative of f. Well, what I can use is this power series again. I can differentiate this power series term by term, and I'll get a power series for the derivative of f at least valid on this interval. So let me write that down. So what I've got is that the derivative of f at x is given by this power series. The sum n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n times the derivative of x to the n, which is n times x to the n minus 1. And this is at least valid when the absolute value of x is less than r. Now, what am I going to do with this? Well, let me write out the first few terms of this uh, power series just to give you an idea what this looks like. And of course, it looks exactly like the derivative up here. But uh, let me just plug in n equals 1, and I get a sub 1 times 1 times x to the 0th power, which is just 1. So this is uh, the first term is just a sub 1 times 1. The n equals 2 term, well, that's a sub 2 times 2 times x to the first power. The uh, n equals 3 term, well, that's a sub 3 times 3 times x squared. And then it keeps on going. And I mean, you can see this is just the derivative of this, right? The derivative of a sub 0 is just the derivative of a constant, which goes away. The derivative of a sub 1 times x is right here, a sub 1 times 1. The derivative of a sub 2 times x squared is right here, a sub 2 times the derivative of x squared, it's 2x, it keeps on going. Okay, now what happens when I evaluate this power series at x equals 0? Well, every single term has an x in it except for the constant term, which is a sub 1. So the derivative of f at 0 is just equal to a sub 1 which is telling me that if I've got a power series representation for my function f, I know what the a sub 1 coefficient has to be. It has to be the derivative of my function at 0. And I can just keep on doing this. The coefficient in front of x squared, a sub 2, that coefficient can be calculated in terms of the second derivative of f. Let me differentiate this again in order to get a power series representation for the second derivative of f. So f double prime is the term by term derivative of this power series, which is the sum n goes not from 1 but from 2 to infinity of the derivative of this, which is a sub n times n times the derivative of x to the n minus 1, which is n minus 1 times x to the n minus 2. And this is valid at least when the absolute value of x is less than r. Now we'll look at the first few terms. So when I plug in n equals 2, I get what? a sub 2 times 2 times 2 minus 1 times x to the 2 minus 2, x to the 0, that's just times 1. All right, so a sub 2 times 2 times 1 times 1. Plus, what happens when I plug in n equals 3? Uh, a sub 3 times 3 times 3 minus 1, so times 2, times x to the 3 minus 2, so just times x. What about when n equals 4? Well, that's a sub 4 times 4 times 4 minus 1 times 3 
times x to the four minus two and times x squared. And it's gonna keep on going. And then what happens again is that all of these terms have an x in there. All right, so when I plug in x equals zero, this term dies, this term dies, all the other terms die, except for that constant term, which is a sub two times two. So what is this telling me? This is telling me that the second derivative of f at zero is just this constant term. It's two times a sub two. And then if I divide both sides by two, what I'm finding is that a sub two is the second derivative of f at zero divided by two. Let's try to figure out a sub three. Well, I've got the original function, its derivative, its second derivative. Now I'm gonna calculate the third derivative. So f triple prime at x is the sum, n goes not from two, but from three to infinity of the derivative of this, which is a sub n times n times n minus one times the derivative of x to the n minus two. So times n minus two times x to the n minus third power. And this is valid at least when the absolute value of x is less than r. Now what's the constant term? Well the constant term is just the n equals three term because that's x to the three minus three. And that's exactly what the third derivative at zero is equal to. So let me write that down. The third derivative at zero is just the constant term in this power series which is the n equals three term which is a sub three times three times three minus one times three minus two. In other words, right, what this formula is telling me is that a sub three is equal to the third derivative of f at zero divided by six. But it'll be better to think of that six as being three factorial. Instead of writing down six, let me write down three factorial, and then I can write down the general fact Right, that a sub n, the nth coefficient in the power series for my function f, right, I'm assuming that my function f has this nice power series representation. And then a sub n is given by computing the nth derivative of f at the point zero and dividing that by n factorial. So yeah, in general, the coefficient on x to the n, that a sub n, that can be calculated in terms of the nth derivative of f. But why is this important, right? Why do we care about this? Well, the whole point is that now we're in a position to work backwards. So I mean that I'll assume that my function, some function that I'm interested in, has a power series representation, that it's given by, say, this power series on the interval from minus r to r. Now, if I assume that that's the case, then by differentiating, I can figure out what these coefficients have to be, right? And that's exactly what I'm claiming, that the nth coefficient is given by calculating the nth derivative of f at zero and dividing by n factorial. Let me say this a bit differently. If this function f can be written as a power series on the interval from minus r to r, then f of x is equal to this power series, the sum n goes from zero to infinity, of the nth derivative of f at the point zero divided by n factorial, that's what the coefficient has to be, times x to the n. This has a name, or well, rather it has two names. One of those names is Maclaurin series. You'll often see this thing called the Maclaurin series for f. The other name that you'll see, uh, you'll see this thing called the Taylor series for f centered around zero. Regardless of what you wanna call this, I should warn you about something. Suppose that you just start with a function that you don't know very much about. Maybe all you know about the function f is that you can differentiate it as many times as you like. Well then you could write down the Maclaurin series for f. You could write down this, the Taylor series for f centered at zero. All you need to be able to do is just differentiate f as many times as you like at the point zero in order to write down this power series. The issue though is that nothing that we've said so far actually tells you that this power series is related to the original function f in any way. This whole story has been predicated on an assumption. It's been predicated on the assumption that f is equal to a power series, and if f is equal to a power series, then this must be the power series that f is equal to. But if you don't know that, if you're just starting with some random function, then there's no guarantee whatsoever that if you write this thing down, that it's gonna have any relationship at all to the original function. And relating f and this, its Maclaurin series, or its Taylor series centered at zero, 
is going to be a huge part of what we do the rest of this week.